Good evening, guys. Good evening. Thanks for coming on an off night here on a Tuesday. We're going to do a little live listing show. Uh, just trying to fix my microphone. I think it's too far down. Please let me know if you have any trouble hearing me. I'll make a, a tweak if needed. Usually it's not a problem, though. But welcome aboard, everybody. Hey, postcard guy. How you doing? Kevin's here. Good to see you, man. Hi, Jim. Two Floridians, fellow Floridians. Hey, CJ. Welcome aboard, man. As always. Hi, Steven. Thanks for coming in. Hello, Karen. There he is, number two. Does this mean you should work your allergic kid? Hey, it's just a, it's a suggestion, not a not a requirement. When I say let's, it's listing time. It's listing time for me. Good. Thank you very much. Doing great, man. Thank you very much. Um, it's very good to see you, man. Blue Feather Ephemeral once again on the YouTubes. Go check them out. But great to see you. Thanks for coming in. Hi, Joe. Welcome aboard. What's up, Eric? Good luck listening to eBay service crash all over. Get out, really? I haven't had any trouble yet. Yet. There he is, Keith. <laughs> how you doing, man? Great to see you. We'll get into that for just a second in a moment. Hi, Jeff. How you doing? Just wanted to make sure I say hello to everybody. But yeah, Keith, uh, great to meet Keith. His wife and his mother-in-law came to see my band on, what night was it, Keith? Sunday? Saturday? In Cleveland. All I'm going to say, I'm going to say two things. It was great to meet them. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad you enjoyed the show. That's first and foremost. Secondly, the smallest place I've played in probably, like seriously, 35 years since like maybe the late 80s. Really tiny little like, uh, how would you describe it, Keith? You tell me. Little, It's like a, a almost like a punk bar. <laughs> like a, you should have seen the dressing room. The green room down uh, next to the stage was like all graffiti all over the walls and Lots of nasty things being written. And it's, it's rock and roll. You know, it's only rock and roll, and I like it. But, man, it, it was just really strange. It was like this tiny little club sort of thing off of a bar is the best way I could describe it. So it was uh, really strange, and um, but fun. So I, I'm glad you were there, Keith. It was great to meet you, man. Do you have any storm damage? Steven, uh-oh, what's going on? A bar with a room that has a stage. Otherwise, yeah, look at Keith capsulizing my thoughts completely. In a simple sentence, but yeah, it, it was a bar with a exactly with like a side room that has stage. The stage was actually nice. The stage itself was pretty big, and the sound system was decent. It was just such a tiny room. I mean, it was it was weird for me, but it was still fun. It was what we call it's like a pickup gig. We were out in um, Indiana the night before, and we had a gig in Connecticut, a really nice gig in Connecticut uh, at a theater on Sunday. So sometimes you do these things called routing gigs, which is like, hey, you got to drive from Indiana to Connecticut. You want to break it up. We have this uh, opportunity to do this like pickup gig. And uh, that was the one that wound up being in Cleveland. And uh, definitely an experience. Definitely an experience. You don't think so. You just got back from Arizona. Oh, very cool, man. Um, what brought you to Arizona? Yeah, very cool. I'm interested to see what's going on with eBay now. I'm hearing about these uh, issues. If, if we have a server error, then we'll just chat away. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll make do. Whatever the eBay gods provide to us, we will, uh, you know, we'll act accordingly depending on how eBay is uh, faring tonight. But anyway, how you guys doing? How was the weekend? Um, I know it's Tuesday, but how was the weekend? Uh, I know crazy weather. The bridge thing this morning was unbelievable. That's a bridge I've been over. No, I actually haven't been over that bridge, but I've seen that bridge many, many times. So heartfelt condolences to anybody who uh, lost loved ones in that unbelievable Tragedy last night, early this morning. Williams Island Resort. Went to see the Grand Canyon. Beautiful, man. Was that your first time visiting it? It is quite a sight to behold, that's for sure. What's up, Morris? No issues listing on your end. Okay, very cool. Yeah, well, we'll see it live. And by the way, the count. I mean, that's one of the more funny things you'll ever see. The count in Morris's thing. Good to see you, man. Thanks for coming along. Yeah, we will dive into the uh, into eBay shortly. We have a bunch of ads from 1920 tonight from a ladies home journal ladies home journal from that era they're a little bit longer than the life magazines which are kind of like your template if you will or your, your litmus test uh these are 16 inches long so it's a couple of inch, a couple of inches longer and 11 inches wide so uh i do have special uh but non-bendable non-rigid what do you call them rigid mailers excuse me non-bendable rigid mailers that you would typically use for like photos and things and i have large ones that are like 18 inches to accommodate those uh magazines with the the longer form factor 16 inches so a big magazine uh i think it was september 1920 a couple of cool ads today we'll definitely check them out you're self-employed and don't have weekends there you go 
Yeah, the the weekend, the term the weekend is just strictly from a calendar perspective. It's not really like, hey, do you guys hang out on the weekend? I know all of us that dabble in this, it's pretty much same with me. I mean, it's a seven day a week thing, unless I'm on the road doing something else. But I'm always making money, always making money, always be and dealing. Since you had the issue with the app, sales have been really good. Really, not sure if it's coincidence if you turned on my store. Yeah, that theory of turning on. Have you been listening? Good to see that you've been listening, Jim. Very cool, Keith. Have you been listening? Have you been listening with a you know on a daily basis? eBay likes when you list. Went by it before, but never stopped. Oh, very cool. Hope you had a good time. Did you actually like camp down there or anything in, in the canyon? Or did you take the donkeys down like on the Brady Bunch? Excuse me. I'm still finishing my dinner. <laughs> we had a, we did a big kitchen renovation about a month ago. There's still some odds and ends that aren't completed. So to flip it has resumed some baking activity which uh, kind of kept me out of the kitchen, couldn't make any dinner. So I just made something at like 6.15. I'm going to try to finish up. You've been listening on a frequent basis since late last week. Okay, cool. Well, that's good to see that things are picking up since. A two-hour stream. Very cool. That sounds really interesting, man. I haven't, my God, when was, I, I went there twice. Um, it's probably, been, I think like 92 or something was the last time I was there. So I don't know if things have changed. I'm sure the canyon looks the same. But as far as the experiences, they used to have a helicopter tour. I did Boulder Dam, a Hoover Dam, and a Grand Canyon thing on a Vegas trip. Well, anyway, guys, uh, shall we list? Shall we list? We'll see if eBay works on my side. It was doing fine earlier in the day, so I'm hoping there's no issues. We'll see. You know, we're hearing tale of some potential server uh, outages and whatnot, but we will try. And again, if for some reason it's uh, crapping out on us, plan B, we'll just hang out. We'll chat for a little bit. I'll finish my dinner. You'll watch me eat. You know, it's a lot of fun. All right, let's uh, do this. Let's get rid of the banner. Let us uh, share the screen. You guys know the drill now, don't you? Uh, boom. Go to eBay. All right, have my draft set up. 1920, over 100 years at this point. My grandmother was born in 1920. Passed away a few years ago. We start off with a bang, folks. A little good old fashioned male chauvinistic ad to kick things off. Get you know, stir the pot a little bit, get people fired up. It's just an advertisement from 1920. Don't get fired up. I'm joking. But it is funny. It's a uh, very chauvinistic and of the time, I suppose. But this is the first one. So we're gonna go to the listing thing. I'm gonna put Libby's in there and let's see what they come up with with Libby's. Let's see if there's a, a category assigned for Libby's. I'm really not sure to be honest with you. Uh, food, no. Appetizing. Food and beverage. Mm, we'll go other. And then we have food ads for my proprietary store stuff, and I have 1920s filled out. All right, so the brand is Libby's. And we'll take a look at the ad after we put in some specifics and have some fun with that. <laughs> this is a print ad. U.S. 1920 in this one. All right. Usual shenanigans down here. You see uh, September 1920. Ladies Home Journal sit a little bit bigger once again, 16 by 11. Everything else song remains the same, except the price goes up because it's from 1920 and they're bigger ads. What's up, Dawn? How you doing? Great to see you. Literally, I saw the eyes in, in the corner of my eyes. Um, how you doing? And Karen, how you doing? Karen... Karen P. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Karen. Petrosovitz? Petrosovitz? Probably a lot easier than I'm making it, but I, I just have terrible vision nowadays, with uh, especially with something relatively close up. My screen is maybe a foot away from me, and it's it's quasi-readable. But welcome aboard, Karen. Good to have you. And away we go. So, Dawn, to get you all fired up, we have a nice male chauvinistic ad to get things started tonight. So let's take a look. It's for Libby's. Why your husband is ignoring you? Because you're a lousy cook. Live with it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Perhaps this is why your husband doesn't talk to you. A masculine angle on a situation in which many women complain. You could see the you know age-old dilemma here. Poor mother, after a day of toil in the home, being the greatest homemaker there is, husband comes home, opens the paper, probably smokes a pipe, kicks back, ignores the missus. A brief yes or no, and he's back to his paper, back in his paper. Thoughts a thousand miles away. Apparently, he has forgotten you are there. What's the matter? It's too funny. 
Dear sirs, here's a suggestion for your series of articles on women. I'm only a bachelor. Blah, blah. Basically, cook, um, make good food is the key. Remember the old expression? That a way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So basically, this is uh, reinforcing that. Got some bizarre items here. Hopefully, everybody can see this. I can blow up. Oh, my camera's in the way. Shoot. Well, anyway, right under where it says Libby's, you have mustard. You can see that, right? And that little box that's directly the top right of my head, right here. That says Libby's veal loaf. You got the Vienna sausages over here. You can see that. You got the corned beef. You got the dried beef. And... Speaking of Dawn Wright, and number two, Chatham, Ontario, Canada. <clears throat> you should get spam. <laughs> uh, you finally got your eyes checked yesterday, says Dawn. Glasses will take two weeks to come in, so you can't see a whole lot on the TV. Oh, no, no way. Now, do you have the opposite problem where you have difficulty with distance, but you could see close up? I know. I always forget what it is. One is called nearsighted. One is called farsighted. Whatever the one... That means I can't read anything that's right in front of me. That's what I have. I see fine from a distance. But it sounds like if Dawn's struggling to read the TV or watch the TV, perhaps that's the issue. Hey, Jackie Jack, what's up, man? Good evening to you. Karen says she's doing good. Wonderful. Thanks for coming in. You should get spam as hysterical. Hello, uh, Hydrant. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Can of dried beef. Yum, I know. You're nearsighted. You can't see distance. There you go. There you go. Nearsighted. That makes sense. I am far-sighted, meaning I can see far, can't see close up. It's only been 56 years since, I, since that I've ever <laughs> taken the time to actually think about that. A few years you'll need bifocals. That's kind of where I am actually going, and I have a set of bifocals right here, whereby the top is just like a clear glass because I can see distance in the bottom, so I'm supposed to look down with this thing on my nose to read. But honest to God, it's, it's a major hassle. And lazily, I never put on my reading glasses, which I really should do. But anyway, again, chauvinism at, at its high point right here. Yeah, but it's only been 56 years since I've uh, thought about that problem. September 1920 at the top. This is kind of nice. All of these pages tonight and in this magazine, you'll see it right at the, the header portion, if you will, as the, the name of the uh, publication and the date. So there are no questions as far as, you know, validating authenticity, there it is, bada bing, bada boom. But anyway, basically we have a bunch of canned meat products, boxed meat products, it almost looks like, uh, courtesy of Libby's. So let's get that into our title. Let's start building this thing. We'll go Libby's uh, Meats, I guess, printed. Um, what do you guys think of putting in chauvinistic or chauvinism as a keyword? I think it's kind of cool. I can't spell it, but I'll give it a, a shot. And thank God for the that thing. Chauvinism, uh, housewife, veal, Vienna, sausages, <laughs> as they say in Vienna. Can't spell sausages either. Wow. Because it's versed. Uh, what else we got? What else we got? Dried beef, cream dried beef, veal loaf whoop, with corn oysters, whatever that is. But here's your uh, delicious recipes. It actually says delicious. Veal loaf chilled and sliced with some grated corn, a lightly beaten egg, flour, salt, and pepper. Drop from a spoon into hot fat and corn fritters, basically. Is that what I'm saying, folks? You got a book, a five-minute uh, meal book right there. Send away for there's the Vienna sausage sandwiches with the Libby's mustard, obviously. You got the tomato stuff with corned beef, which actually I would eat. Yeah, I have not heard that term before, but I mean, that, that is actually a very poignant shot. Look at that. Look at mom. Look at how, how sad she looks. Look at this guy being a jerk, buried in his newspaper, right. I guess I will put, for the purposes of keywords, recipes or something. Sausages, recipes. I like to indicate that. Some people, believe it or not, collect old recipes. And that's it for that one. Because like I said, we started off with a bang, a little chauvinism to get things going. It's always fun. Um, it's not boring anyway. That's a good thing, right? And I do have to change my dimensions now that they went to this cubic thing. I think it's 13. 
I, I'll change this if it doesn't apply anymore, but I'm doing 4% promoted on my ads right now. Uh, maybe she has been nagging him since she got home. I mean, just saying, Keith, just saying. Not that that ever happens, I know, especially to you and your lovely wife. I'm sure she's a, an angel on earth. And then Hydrogen, traditional values, sure, absolutely. Teach their own. But there's one down, just like that. We have a, a cool ad up on eBay. And if somebody is searching for chauvinism, why, mine will pop right up because it's a new listing. Uh, you try to allow, but it's not showing for me. Everyone go subscribe to Postcard Guy. Oh, absolutely. Kevin is fantastic. Has great videos down in. Oh, Mrs. Flippin has just informed me that we have a plumbing issue upstairs. Yes. All right. Tell him to just leave it alone. I did. Leave it alone. But unfortunately, he's not listening to me. I'm on the show, so just tell him, please, leave it alone. Just tell him, Marty said, leave it alone, please. Okay. Say, Marty said, please, leave it alone. He'll take a look after the show. Hello, Mrs. Flippett. How you doing tonight? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. 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 Yeah, she's in great spirits tonight, Dawn. Thank you for saying hi. She's already back upstairs, though. We have a... a Plumbing issue upstairs in the bathroom, courtesy of my dad, clogging up a toilet, you know, and not listening when uh, Mrs. Lippet says, please leave the toilet alone. Stop flushing it. Don't let it overflow anymore. Yep, it's time for the plunger, Keith, but we're going to wait. We have duty calls. We got eBay. Ha ha ha. That's a funny pun. No, we're going to do the eBay stuff first, then we'll take care of the duty. Jiminy, how many listings do you have running? Ah, uh, 7,800 or so, I think, Morris, something like that. In this store, I have like 150 in, a, in another store, which is just strictly clothing. When duty calls. But yes, it's definitely time for the plunger. Time for the newspaper as well, says Carl. Very funny. All right, were you able, Don, were you able to put a link in? Is that what you're looking for? A, uh, a link for Kevin's channel? Because it just says at postcard guy right now. Excuse me. I know I shouldn't be talking about my mouth full, but we got we all, cats and dogs sleeping together. The toilet's overflowing. You know what I mean? It's the reality. It's the finest. All right. Okay, cool. Thank you. Let's see. Um, where should we go? You can see we have a couple of these... Um, Divided in half pages, so they're still 16 inches long, but they're, uh, what's it, five and a half inches wide. So we'll take we'll do those later on. Let's go to this one, because this is a, a product that initially I didn't know what it was, and I've sold a couple over the last year or so, so now I am familiar with what they are. It's called Jack Tar, school uniforms for kids. Makers of school uniforms. And I have sold several of these, so I'm excited to have another one in my possession here. For school and sportswear, you see it says right there. And let's see, I'm pretty sure this will take us right to the, whatchamacallit, right to the uh, clothing category. What happened to our trick we used to do? It's not working. Hold on. Remember the trick? You're supposed to click on what's there, go to done, click on it again, and it brings up the thing. It's not working for me, though. So let's go the old-fashioned way. We'll just go advertising. We'll go clothing. We'll go clothing. We'll go 20 to 49. Bam. There you go. There's the postcard guy. Link. Go check out Kevin on YouTube. Jack Tags, Togs made the sailor suits popular back there. Absolutely, Kevin. You'll see them all over the, the little boys with the little, it's like a white square thing on their back, sort of. We'll take a look at the photos. But yeah, they made school uniforms and things like that. Ilk. So, Jack Tar. I don't know if. Togs is the product, or if the whole thing is considered the like is Jack. We'll take a look at the at the ad. Let me take a look at the ad and stop speculating. Let's pull it up. I'll go right to the bottom for a minute, and you can see the company, the label of honor, Rubum Tubum Scrubum Jack Tar Togs. Okay, <clears throat> Charlie Roving Tar at least. You should know every song ever written at this point, Don. You, you'd listen to the entire archive of musical history, recorded musical history of mankind, didn't you? On YouTube. So that is indeed the uh, the full name of the product. I'll change this on my store category to clothing. Get that done. Let's go in and change our brand. It's 
That's pretty much it. Everything else is the same. Well, let's put 1920 in date of origin, date of creation. Does anybody have any clear understanding of what the distinction is? You ever see this? One well, comes up once in a while. Date of creation, date of origin. Sounds like one and the same to me, but I'm sure there's a reason there's a distinction there. If anybody knows, like matter of factly, I'd love to know. But I mean, it's still the same thing. They're both from 1920 in my case. But I used to, when I did auto, uh, when I do auto bill ads, we've talked about this many times. Let's say it's like a November or December issue of a magazine and it's 1920. They're going to be talking about the 1921 cars. So sometimes I would use these two different dates to distinguish that like, the magazine was created in 1920 or the ads in 1920, but it's talking about a 1921 model year. Uh, date of, hey, how you doing, Eric? Date of creation, 1984. Date of origin may be referring to a 1960 ad. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand what that means, though. Date of creation. Like this, again, if, let's just use this as an example, right? This is a September 1920 magazine. So the date of creation is September 1920. Date of origin is also the same day. I just don't know why they have that. I've never really understood. And you know how most of the things, like a lot of things, this one has a link and you can read about what it says. You notice how these two do not have any links. What's up, Rose Squirrel? How you doing? Uh, you've got a question. Do vintage stickers or dress patterns made of tissue count as ephemera? I don't believe so. St uh, stickers you might be able to get in there, though. Yeah, exactly, Eric. For um, for this purpose, it's definitely 1920. Again, I'm just trying to figure out why there would be some sort of, you know, separation there. And it only comes up under certain categories as well, which is odd. Exactly. We don't know why eBay does a lot. Um, again, great to see you, Kristen. Welcome aboard. But I, I wouldn't. I don't think dress patterns. Ephemera is supposed to be a short-term use that gets thrown out, and dress patterns, I would imagine, wouldn't be thrown out instantly. They used to make dresses. If that, if anybody agrees with that, let me know. I, I think that's accurate. What's up, Maria? How you doing? Uh, hi, erroneous. <laughs> hi, erroneous. Um, hi, everyone. There you go. Erroneous to everyone. Welcome aboard, Maria. Great to have you. I'm going to assume that was a voice to text thing. Getting you. I've been nabbed by that many a time. So you agree. Sir. All right. With that said, let's take a look at the ad. We've determined that, yes, Jack Tar Togs is the brand. <laughs> Rub them, tub them, scrub them. They come up smiling. So these adorable outfits. Yep, they, and this is what CJ was referring to, the boys and girls. It almost looks like a sailor suit. Yeah, spell check. You see that that thing in the back? The Little Rascals, if you guys ever watched The Little Rascals, the legendary uh, Hal Roach series with the kids, with Spanky and all that. Sometimes I think they wear this thing. I think Spanky had an outfit like that. Uh, what's up, David? How you doing? Oh, uh, you're saying do print ads sell and whatnot. They do when I do a whatnot. I don't know if anybody, when I started doing whatnots, I think I was the only one doing print ads and there might be some other people now. I mean, once we started with Popeye and some other folks, we started that, um, um, ephemerama thing, which has been passed on to somebody else. Now I understand. But when, when we were doing that, I did print ads. I don't think anybody else was doing print ads. If they did, they were just kind of mixing it in with other ephemera. But welcome to the show, David. Jack Taws were seamen or merchant marines. Ah, thank you. You had a shirt that's like that in the early 80s. <laughs> Did you really? That's hysterical. But yeah, really cool. So obviously this is like schoolroom, right? You got the school teacher also sporting the, that same thing on the back. That's kind of the distinctive feature, if you will. She's got them too. So basically, they, I guess they're supposed to be very long-lasting, double-stitch seam, fast colors, blah, 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 blah. So you can wash them, and they won't shrink. They won't lose their color. Ample measurements chosen by mothers who recognize true economy. All right. School sportswear. I think we're going to put that in there. School sports. Where? Sports wear one word or two. Yeah, I was saying, I think stickers might be. I agree, Dawn. But um, I don't think so much the dress patterns, Kristen. Did you fall into a whole bunch of them in your escapades? <laughs> Sometimes stuff comes into your world that you weren't necessarily looking for. We got phones beeping. We got... Mr. Slipper with a vulgar text. 
um, expressing her unhappiness with the goings-on upstairs, our plumbing situation. Continues to deteriorate as we speak. Uh, sports where, how about like schoolroom maybe? Uh, students. Studenten, as we say in German. Students. Blackboard. Seeing in the dead of night. What do you guys think of those words for this for this guy? Uh, David says, what's my channel name? Jiminy Flibbit. For reselling stuff, Jiminy Flip It. You guys uh, enjoying these keywords? Think they're pretty appropriate? Think I'm missing anything? Think I'm putting something that doesn't belong there? Let me know what you think. This collaborative effort here. <laughs> it's a lot of fun uh, hearing people's opinions and Kevin bringing some knowledge to the table, which is always a good thing. Explaining the, the sailor thing and the merchant marine. So it's kind of, I guess, obviously... Um, that's where the, the idea came or the, the motivation for this style, why it became popular. The bows in the hair is very of the time too. If not, we're going to let it go. David recently picked up 10 years of the New Yorker magazine. You should sell the covers. I'm sorry, David. Hang on one second. The uh, If somebody else writes anything right now, like hi, just for a second, it'll move the chat up so that I can read the rest of David. There you go. Uh, you recently picked up a 10... 10 years of the New Yorker magazine. Should I sell covers and ads or complete magazines? I'm always, anytime you ask me about that, it's going to come down to, for me, it's always about the ads. You know, I would argue that any magazine virtually on earth, you could get a whole lot more for the individual ads than you can for the whole magazine. Um, there are, there are some valuable magazines. I'm sure there's exceptions, but the great, the vast majority of everyday magazines, you'll make way, 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 way. And I mean, hundreds of times more than you could make, Selling a, uh, a nondescript issue of life as an example. Exactly. As Dawn says, get the scissor out, carve them up. Yep. If you want to sell the covers independently, that's fine. I've I've actually, it's interesting you said that because this very issue that we're working with, uh, Lee's Home Journal from 1920, I have been keeping the covers if they are salvageable because some of them are kind of ripped up. If they're salvageable, I've been putting all the covers of these like uh, maybe up to like 1929 and prior. And I'm just kind of putting them in a pile. I have a nice pile. And I think I'm going to um, make one massive listing with like a whole bunch of ancient, you know, 100 plus year old um, magazine covers and see if there's any interest in that for crafters or whatever. I'd probably get good money for it. So that's a little tip for you guys. If you have, if you have like I said, if it's a, a decent quality um, cover, although some people like to stress stuff like we talked last week, but, you know reasonably good shape covers for these really old magazines. If you want to just like keep that on the side and let a pile build up, I think it's a, a cool idea to just sell it as like a lot. I, I probably have over a hundred already in mine. I don't know what number I'm looking for, but I want to make a lot of money on them. I just basically make some big old lot of old, uh, very old magazine covers. Uh, 80s era. So thanks for the help. Oh, you're very welcome, David. Yeah. I would imagine every era has something appealing to people. You could probably sell something from a modern magazine. You know, um, advertising is advertising. Um, 80s, you're going to have a lot of, you know, the Atari stuff and Coleco and, you know, video game things and Walkman ads. And uh, it was 83 or so before you have the Michael Jordan stuff coming in. and the So, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of very appealing stuff for, for collectors from the 80s as well. My newest magazine so far that I have is 82 is my newest one. But you're very welcome. Uh, you'll keep them a pile of subscription cards. You have 200. Yeah, the subscription cards is another thing. It's funny you just said that. I just sold a Doug, right? I'm sorry. I think you said your name was Doug. Blue Femmer, I'm sorry. You told me last show. I'm pretty sure it was Doug. Um, yeah, I've done the same thing. I have I don't have 200, but I've made little bundles and sold them. And I just sold one independently like a week ago. But that's a good idea, too. The little subscription cards that come in, mag not just Life, any magazine, you know, to get a free year of whatever it is or pay for a year subscription. They're usually somewhere in the middle of a magazine. They're usually in really good shape too, because provided the magazine's in de decent shape, it probably hasn't been opened in eons. And those little uh, those little things do pretty cool. They they could sell. So good tip there from Doug, Greg. Good tip from Greg. I'll never forget that again as long as I live. Sorry about that, Greg. Um, Eric, there's a sellers who list the cover if the address label is not on it. Yeah, careful because buyers will think they're getting the full magazine. They don't read. This is true. 
people don't read on eBay, especially it's, it's an epidemic. It's pathetic. I would, I would argue, but yeah, that's why I think I might get away with, if I say a lot of vintage, you know, not a space lots as in a group of, um, very vintage old magazine covers. Maybe I'll get away with that, but I could absolutely see that be a, a, you know, potentially see that being a problem. You put up a, a really cool cover. People think they got the right, the whole magazine. I agree with you. Vaughn says, and ha welcome to the show, Vintage Vaughn. Covers do well. I agree, they do. Eric Russell's have some advertisements from 2022. There you go. Yeah. So I'm saying it doesn't always have to be old. You know. Greg's still a newbie. No problem. I'm really sorry, man. But I won't forget that. I won't forget that. All right. So anyway, I think we're going to let this one go, right? We have the brand. We have printed at school sportswear because that's what the product is. They're in a school room. There's students. There's a blackboard. I think blackboard is a cool word to use. Specifically done. Let's list it. Why does the girl to the right look like Taylor Swift? I'm sorry. I just came out of the thing. Is it still up? Great similar. Pull it back up. This girl or this girl? There's three girls. <laughs> this one, this one, or this one. This one doesn't. The one on the right says Eric. This girl right here in the foreground. All right. Everybody get their jollies pretending it's her. Cool, cool. You never know. She might have been around 1920. Nobody realized it. Very good. Groovy. Let's go. Number three on the way. Got that one listed. Oops. Sorry. I just hit the microphone there. And please, guys, if you haven't had a chance yet to leave a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. If you're hanging out and enjoying the program, show, whatever you want to call it, I'd really appreciate it. Give a thumbs up. Let YouTube know that you're digging it. It would mean the world to me. All right, there's two. What is that? Two down. Um, we have another controversial one for Dawn because she likes controversial stuff. But we'll save this. We'll save that one. Excuse me. Here's a nice, pretty looking ad. One of those time travel quizzes. Yeah. Alluring. This is a brand of soap, I believe, but we'll, we'll have to blow this up for clarification. All right, we have Tetlo. Tetlo. Pussy Willow Powder. Talcum powder. Talc powder. Okay. Ever since 1849. So it's it's face powder, talcum, whatever you want to call it. Pretty image. Very pretty image. Look at that. Jiminy Dust is real. Sailed the show the other night. There you go. Congratulations. Oh, uh, during my show. That's hysterical. That's right. Yeah, remember you told me. It is definitely real. Sifted through silk. Can't beat that. I thought Dawn, yeah, this is a pretty image though, isn't it, Dawn? Like the painting itself, the woman and the it's very nice. Let's do a quick blow up and see if there's an artist name on here. Something we like to do around these parts. Anybody see an artist name? I don't. Scan up, scan down. There's nothing. Just trust me, the bottom right has nothing. I know my face is in the way, but there's nothing there. Bottom left has nothing. Just sifted through silk. No, this isn't controversial. I said, well, we're saving the controversial one. Got to build up for it. What's up, Mark? How you doing? Welcome aboard. Hope all is well with your mother-in-law. Saw that post. Karen, uh, taking the plug plunge, I'm sure you mean, and finally going to list print ads. Awesome. You just need a scanner. If you could only buy one, what should you get? I want a good one, but not a great one. Budget 300 to 400. Thanks. Um, if you plan on listing... Lots of print ads. The if you look at the link that I have in my, my uh, right under the description on this very video, and I think all of my videos, I have a uh, a link to a scanner that I use all the time. Price wise, I don't know what it costs anymore. I got to be honest with you. You might be four hundred. You might be able to find four hundred, but it's called a Doc Action Plus Tech Optic Slim. It has a really large form factor. It can like these ads, for instance, that the sixteen by eleven. It eats it up and spits it out. It's designed for 
it was designed originally for blueprints, so it's a really large, accommodates, it accommodates a very large space. So pretty much any magazine you can find, you'll be able to scan it on that thing. So if that is within your budget, uh, if it's around 400, just check the link that's down below. The price might have changed since last since I bought it. Mine's probably about three years old now, but I swear to you, the thing is, I swear by this thing. It's absolutely awesome. 349, there you go. Says CJ. And says Dawn Wright, thank you very much. Found safe, that's awesome, Mark. Thank God, that's beautiful. If anybody, if you guys want to expound upon that, feel free. I just, I knew what was going on, so I just wanted to ask. That's great to hear, man. Great, you'll check it out. Yeah, definitely, Karen. Thank you. Check it out. If you click on the link, I do supposedly get some kind of little commission or something, but I haven't seen a penny yet from these people. So just know that I really genuinely love this thing. I use it all the time. All these ads that you're seeing today, as a matter of fact, scan, uh, using that scanner. So I was hyping that thing up long before I had any affiliate link with it. It really is a great product. So if it's, again, if you have the means and it's within your budget, and that's a hearty budget, three to 400. So it sounds like you are serious when you say you're taking the plunge. So best of luck. If you ever have any questions, I'm always here to help. We'll get him, Karen. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Eric, you Googled the image and came up with Tet Loves Pussy Willow Talc, Henry Tetlow, Philadelphia, 1920s. There you go. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, the Google is our friend, I guess. huh? So let's just start off with Tetlow's. T-E-T. Of course, I put Vetlos for my Slavic friends. Tetlos, which of course comes up with a spell check. T-E-T-L-O-W apostrophe S. T-E-T-L-O-W apostrophe F. Well, uh, use your phone for the larger ads. Still much to my chagrin. Well, that's not to my chagrin. Do whatever works. I, I could care less. I just, I really like the scanner. I love my scanner. I used the phone too for a couple of years when I was starting out. It made, made my life. I actually, the first thing I've talked about this before, the first thing I ever used was my regular printer scanner, which is like eight and a half by 11. And I would do the top half on one scan and the bottom half of, on another scan. And that was my listing with two, kind of a top half and a bottom half. And then I started doing the phone thing like Dawn talks about. And then I found this, I was looking for a scanner for ages and finally found that one. That's why I was so excited to share it with people who who would find value with it. It's a fantastic product, truly. Knock on wood, never had one issue with it in the three or so years that I've been using it. And I use it virtually every day in some capacity. It also, it's great for records. I've talked about this. You can fit like a whole record cover on there, which really makes for great presentation. Not many people who sell records take the time to take really stellar photos of the covers and stuff. So again, little edges. Uh, I sell 78 records. You could, do, you could scan the 78. It looks great. It's even. Um, Karen, use your phone for ephemera, but you have a lot of ephemera magazines. Rec record, sheet music. Yeah. you could, Like I said, records, sheet music, of course, fits on it. Yeah. Anything you could fit in that space, you could scan. That's why I really like the product. So what you were saying is if you could pick one, you know, I have a duplex scanner right here to my side, which works great for postcards and smaller magazine ads, like an eight and a half by 11 magazine ad I could put into the duplex scanner. And then it's, that's a lot faster process. Because it just feeds continuously, if you don't know what a duplex scanner does. And the scanner that I'm hyping up is just a traditional flatbed. You have to lift the thing, put the ad down, close it, hit scan, repeat. But uh, it's still fantastic. You have 7,000 listings now. Never have scanned an ad. If I had one, I might something it. Can't see it with that heart in the way. But yeah, cool. Greg has 7,000. Yeah, I'm about 7,800 or so, but... It's not a contest. I, I'd rather sell 7,800 than have them listed. I'm out of the uh, trying to amass volume game with a lot of stuff. I won't sell my list. <laughs> uh, you're almost at the end of your postcards again. Oh, wow. You'll be back to sheep. It's very cool. So you've been on a frenzy or on a tear with the with the postcards, Tom? Okay. Talc powder, right? Talcum powder, should we put? I think we'll put that. Let's see what that comes up with as far as a category. Man, I hate this. It doesn't give you a suggested one anymore. Talcum powder. So health and beauty. Perfume and cologne. Where would we put this up? Ah, talcum and bath powder. Bam. Dawn on 11. Congratulations, Dawn. Uh, we're going to go personal care products here for me. For my store category, personal care products. I would call talcum a personal care product. Um, all right. 
So let's take a look. This it's a very pretty picture. I, I think you would agree. Sifted through silk. I mean, maybe that does need to be in there. Alluring. If anybody thinks we should speak to the actual artwork on here, then that's uh, something we can consider as well. I'd like to look at the whole thing. This is something that Greg does in his channel, Blue Feather Ephemera, really well. Is he kind of like does what I do on a listing show, but in reverse? Like he's let's say he sold this ad. He'll say, "Hi, I sold this ad for." Henry Tetlow, if it's some talcum powder, it has this, you know, features this beautiful woman in this hat and this uh, Greek looking <laughs> building or something, ancient Greece looking Roman columns building. And it has, you know, orchids in the front. I have no idea if they're orchids. So I think that's really cool the way he, he goes into detail about a specific ad after it's sold. But we're kind of doing the reverse when we list them. The last month or so, you haven't been listing as much, but you'd like, you're getting back to it. Yeah, I think it's a lovely ad. Well said, Karen. Lovely is a beautiful word. It is a lovely ad. Cha-ching. Jiminy Dust working. Sold the brooch. Congratulations, CJ. Thank you very much. Leave those thumbs up, folks. Leave those thumbs up. Get your sales tonight. Get your sales. Hot dogs. eBay sales. Refresh my screen, actually. Here on the side screen. All righty. Yeah, please uh, leave those thumbs up, folks. I'd appreciate it very, very much. And I'm going to make the, I never appealed to this, but I'd like to know if anybody has any friends or any colleagues that enjoy this kind of content, please share out my information to them. Try to get some more subscribers. Um, knock it on 2000s door, which is really out of crawl, but very appreciative, extremely appreciative of the 2000 who cared enough to subscribe. I think that's a wonderful thing. But um, yeah, if you know anybody that might be interested, please just share out the information. Let them know that I'm here. Yeah, you ate your chings. I agree. I'd love to build the community up a bit and have more fun and have more thoughts and more input. That's really the only motivation for me. It's not about the money. I'm filthy rich. So uh, alluring and sifted through silk. I think those are interesting keywords. Anybody think of anything to mention about the actual image itself? And don't just hold the postcard. Congratulations. Everybody's kicking butt tonight. I love to hear it. I love to hear it. I love to hear it. Lovely. How about lovely lady? There's a powerful, potent couple of words right there. Lovely lady. Yeah, 11,000 is an unbelievable number, Dawn. Way to go. I hope it means you're selling a lot more. Your wife subbed this morning. No kidding, CJ. Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. That's right. I'm a Beatle. I'm rich. No, thank God for Beetle gigs. I'll just I'll leave it at that. Unless you're playing in Cleveland in a bar, that's not so much a rich thing. But it was still fun to play, and I got to meet Keith and his family. So mission accomplished. All right, lovely lady. Uh, does anybody know what kind of flowers these are? I don't know if there are any specific flowers. I think they're just kind of a color scheme. Romantic would be a good keyword. Says Hydrin. There you go, Dawn. And so mission accomplished, right? Uh, dang, too bad you missed your show in Cleveland. Oh, really? Sorry about that, Eric. Yeah, we just played on Saturday night, I think it was. It wasn't really, it was Cleveland, but how would you describe that, uh, Eric? Not Eric, I'm sorry. Keith. Is it, I mean, we were in Cleveland, but we weren't, it was like a suburb of Cleveland. I'll tell you what, we had an interesting altercation leaving the venue. I'm going to call them out. They didn't feed us. At this venue. That never happens. It's in our contract. We're supposed to be fed. They never fed us. So we're going to take some action on that on that end. But uh, yeah, Lakewood was a town. But since they didn't feed us and we played a whole show, we were absolutely famished afterwards. So we found that there was a, a little diner, I don't know, a mile from the venue. Drove to the diner, pulled it to the uh, parking lot. Right at the top of it was like a little bit of a hill the parking lot right at the top was a bus stop one of those like fiberglass clear glass bus stops there were three guys screaming and yelling probably um on something we'll put it nicely and uh they were like shouting at us and shouting at everybody that pulled into the thing so at that point you have to remember i'd already driven from indiana that morning we set up we did a whole show we were done with the show we were absolutely starving we had one bottle of water i think a piece at this stupid little show. Um, and now we pull into a, a parking lot for a diner. And we're getting harassed there. And people are screaming and yelling. It was just a, a nightmare. 
Let me go into the diner. I order a side Caesar salad, which costs $10.49 for a side salad. Interesting, interesting. I don't know if it was Clifton Diner. It was a dump, though, Keith. Quite frankly, it was a dump. Yeah, it wasn't rough. I mean, it was just that one specific spot. Everything was fine. Like, the block that the bar was on was fine. Yeah, I don't know where I was, man, but it was late. And here we are naively driving the streets of Cleveland and uh, pulling into some diner. The, once we got in the diner, it was fine. But, yeah, there were some shady characters up there. And I'm driving a, a van filled to the gills with lots of sound equipment and very expensive guitars and things. But we made it out alive. <laughs> so the, the moral to the story is I'm here doing the show. So we made it. But um, I, I won't be back. We will not be back at that venue <laughs> if you paid us 20 times more than we made. We'll leave it at that. Not happy. Not happy campers. All right. What does that say? Henry Fellow? Henry Fellow. I just realized that. What is Who's Henry Fellow? Sift it through silk. If we could fit that, I wouldn't mind throwing that in there. Let's see if we, we'll give it a shot. Sifted through. Look at that. Right to 80. Uh, once you get to 117th, I don't know what that means. Is that a street? 117th is the border of Lakewood and Cleveland, kind of the debarkation line. Yeah. Yeah, no offense, man. I know it's your town and all. I'm not ripping on your town. I'm just saying the this diner was... Well, the, the location of the diner, it wasn't really the diner. It was the people hanging out outside the diner, which was awful. Fine art painting keywords. Yeah, sometimes we, we do stuff like that. And that's Dawn is fantastic at that, like coming up with like an error or something. Like this is a painting from, I, I can't think of what they're called right now. Modernism or um, what's that 30s style that we always talk about? My goodness. See, you don't do a listening show for a while. You forget everything. Anyway, Dawn's really good with that. If this if this was like evocative of a specific movement in art, we would absolutely put that in there. Art Nouveau, there you go. Exactly. Exactly, Greg. Art Nouveau would be something we would throw in usually. But I'm at my 80 characters. I'm good. People will see this. Hopefully they like it. I think it's a very beautiful ad. Um, lovely, as was described. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Oh, we did not fill this out. Print ad, folks. Print ad. This is a print ad. Again, welcome everybody for coming in. Thanks so much for checking out the show. Please do leave a thumbs up if you're digging it. Can make that one a little bit more because it's a really lovely ad. Well stated, well stated. All right. And that's how I do my pricing. So it was, how do you price your ads? By feel. <laughs> by feel and by some experience, I guess, with certain things, if you know. Uh, th those arty kind of pieces, the Art Nouveau stuff, which was a great word. Thank you for that, Greg. Um, the Art Nouveau stuff sells well. Please change O in talcum. Ooh, did I misspell that? I will. Thank you very much. I'll go back. And guess what? I have you a comment in here for posterity. So if I forget, I could always go back, watch it, and say, oop, I got to switch talcum. Somebody type again because I'm missing what it's supposed to be changed to. Please change the O and talcum to to a U. There you go. Bought seven skateboards. Wow. Get out. There's something completely different. As they would say. Monty Python. So, folks, don't go to a diner in Cleveland. Whatever you do. Might be the last thing you ever do. What a dump. All right. So those two, I forgot to delete the Libby's ad. Let's see. Your star is unique. No, that's pretty cool, man. You, you see something good, right? You might be into a specific niche or something, but you ain't no fool. And when you see something that you could flip for money, you do it. I'm, I'm the same way. Absolutely. In like computer stuff or computer, uh, the gaming system years ago that I sold and parted out for like, Thousands of dollars that I bought for 200 in a state sale. Well, Coleco computer. Karen feels so much better. Well, that's all that matters, Karen. Thank you. Knowing you feel better makes me all warm and fuzzy inside. All right, here's a cool lab. This is for an Edison, as in Thomas Alva, for those, those who don't know. Pull that one up. This is what we're talking about. 
This is the new Edison phonograph. The phonograph with a soul. Look at this. Senor Frisco. Look him up. Look him up. Go to the Google. Who's Senor Frisco? The world's greatest, uh, we call those things, xylophone player. It's so funny. Last We played a show last weekend. Not this weekend. Prior, Saturday night. Out in Rhode Island. And we were in a school. And um, they had like six of these xylophones in the background. I never played a xylophone before, a xylophone before but it's very simple. I was playing xylophone. It sounded awesome. They, they seriously had like five of them backstage. And they were all different sizes. And they have different tones, obviously, based on the side. And Eric's been dumpster diving free to, free to cash. Yeah, absolutely. Mrs. Flippett used to do, uh, do dumpster diving in a Barnes & Noble, which was the most pristine um, garbage thing you'll ever find in your life. It was just old magazines, literally old magazines that they threw out when they had to recycle and put new issues in. It wasn't old. It was like a month old. And they would just throw these things in perfect condition into this like uh, dumpster that you could eat out of. Seriously, it was so clean. There was nothing in it but paper. And Mrs. Flippett was known to dive into one or two of those. So we have an Edison phonograph up for your consideration right now. Inventor of said phonograph, so it's only right that he has his own brand. Edison phonograph. Not even going to try. We're going to go right to collectibles, advertising. Where would phonograph go? Communication? Yep, phonographs. The kid is good. The kid is good. This will go to radios, musical instruments, music. Hmm. We'll go to radios. That's the closest. The brand is Edison. Not Edeon. Edison. Printed 1920. Again, with this origin versus creation thing. Who knows? Somebody tell me one day what that means. Look it up. Who just got a cha-ching? Eric, what is your ching Congratulations. This is flipping is wise. This is very true, Maria. This is very true. You state facts. Yep. She and she was aggressively diving into these things. I swear. She, she got into it. Once she's hysterical. Once she sees that there's money to be made, she'll do anything. Except clean a clogged up toilet that's waiting for me. Courtesy of my dad. So thanks for that, Dad. You know, I had nothing to do tonight anyway. Vaudeville's strangest thrill. First of all, if you could put vaudeville into your ad, into your keywords, you do that. Vaudeville. Strangest thrill. Did we look up this gentleman? Is this a real guy? Senior somebody? Because if he is, we're going to throw him in. If not, we're going to go to xylophone. And if we have room for both, we'll do both. Do we really have a senior Frisco? Hammer's poise, his xylophone performance continues. Ask them to explain this. So anyway, it's saying that the Edison is the greatest uh, record player ever made, phonograph ever made. There it is. Senor Frisco, who, he looks like an actual guy. Xylophone is the artist extraordinaire and vaudeville's newest purveyor of magic. His chief magic. Senor Frisco found that human ear cannot distinguish between his actual performance and his recreation on the new Edison. Wow. So throw out whatever you have, folks, and go get yourself a 1920 Edison phonograph. It'll blow away anything we have today, guaranteed. I guess we have to put Senior Frisco. He, he's a uh, – hey, everyone, got to take off to the kids. Have a great evening. Thank you, Eric. Onward and upward, man. Thanks for stopping in. I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Senior Frisco. I think we're just going to go Senior Frisco and Xylophone if all those can be put in. Z-I-G-N-O-R-F-R-S-C-O-E. How do you spell Xylophone? We're never going to fit Xylophone in there, are we? But we could use Xylophone. Uh, here's an old trick I haven't used in a while. X-Y-L-O-P-H. In your specifics, you could add a custom specific. Um, instrument xylophone so if somebody searches a xylophone now you got that keyword in there so if you don't have the space in a title that's a nice little trick you could add a custom item specific it's a fact that searches are a combination of keywords in your title and some of these things i've done testing to that effect a lot of people have you could put a certain word in one of these fields that isn't present in your 
title and if you go and search it after a period of time let it let it propagate and all you'll find that your listing comes up so never underestimate the power of these specifics and if needed like i said throw this in so i have instrument xylophone as my uh my custom specific and let's see because i couldn't fit xylophone in here but that's a nice looking ad and again i don't know who uh senior frisco is so let's you know what we could do i have the google here Let's see who Senior Frisco was. We're going to assume he's a was because it was 100 years ago. He'd be about 140 at this point if he's alive. And, of course, you know, nothing better than when you look up Senior Frisco on Google and you just have a spinning tab with your uh, gigabit, gigabit data, which isn't working right now. So never mind that. We'll go back to that one. <laughs> Did I hit Simon on this one, folks? That's okay, Dawn. I'm still eating. I've been eating since right before the show started. It's nice and cold now, but. I think I hit enter. I'm pretty sure I hit enter. Let's check. Let me get out of this for a second. I think I can. I think I can. No, I did not hit enter. See, that's why we check. I did not hit enter. I'll share again. All right, let's hit submit. What were you eating, Dawn? That's the question. Speaking of eating, where is Lori, Mark? And what is she eating? <laughs> what is she making? We always have to discuss Lori and Mark's uh, dining choices because when we come on the air, it's dinner time out in, on the West Coast where they reside. Maybe not West Coast, but Western USA. Pacific time, like a different land. All right, so there's the uh, Edison photograph done. Again, thanks everybody for coming in. Please, if you have any questions or thoughts, feel free in the comments section. I love reading and hanging out with you guys and learning mostly is what I do when I'm on these shows, learning from you guys with your expertise in these different things. Um, uh, what should I go for? We only have two color ads left. Well, you might not see that. Uh, turkey. Yeah, I did. I saw it on the, uh, I see it on that one, Dawn. Yeah, that's a turkey. Very cool. Hey, Biff, how you doing? Checking in late. No problem, man. Welcome aboard. Thanks for coming in. She's picking up your knee brace, meniscus tear surgery. Oh, my God. Hope you're doing all right, man. You had meniscus surgery and you're already home? Wow. That's like a. An in-office procedure or something, you're out in the same day. What do they call that? Not an office. You know what I mean. I hope you, I wish you a very speedy recovery, man. Is it, was it like a wear and tear sort of thing or did you injure it doing something? My back was years and years of wear and tear, I guess. But the, for those who are wondering and keeping score at home, my back is uh, healing nicely. So thanks for, uh, again, early on when I had the surgery. It's been over a month already, which is unbelievable. But we're getting used to it and... You know, I had the little road trip here for 40 years or so and did, I think, did five or six shows already since the surgery and I'm feeling fine playing. I can't lift this on my boys on my roadies, which I got to admit, it's kind of nice being able to just walk in and everything's set up for you already. <laughs> it's kind of nice. But I do the driving, so it's a, we, we all help each other. Keith, you couldn't even tell you had surgery during the performance. Oh, thank you very much, man. Yeah, I feel fine now. Like, as far as like I could stand, I could do all that. Um, during the performance, the only thing you didn't see was like the whole stage was set up. I didn't do any of the setup. I usually do my own stuff, but I had to have my my bandmates help me with that because I seriously can't. I can't bend at all. Like le not that I don't want to. It says don't bend because I have these bones that are trying to fuse. It takes six months for you to fuse, and if you bend and do that, it could it could either like delay that process or actually prohibit that process, which would require another surgery. So we do not want another back surgery ever again, as long as we live to that end. Don't bend. I picked this up today on Amazon, $13 folks. How funny is this? We got to go full screen on this one. Mrs. Flippett said, what the heck is that? <laughs> Let me just save this a second and we'll go back in. I was getting frustrated because I can't bend for anything, right? Literally drop a sock on the floor. I can't bend. And it's again, it's it's like human nature. You just go to pick it up and I really hurt myself. 
on Amazon, trigger pickup thing. Boom. I could drop socks till the cows come home now. Boom. Is that not hysterical? This thing is fantastic. 100% genuine plastic. <laughs> I think this thing is great. It's a grabber, Karen. This thing is like the greatest thing I've ever bought. I, I'm going to use this far beyond when I need to use it. I just think it's the coolest thing. And of course, if something's up high, I'm a tall guy, so I could reach most anything in my house. But it's nice to know that one day if I want to grab something, boom, got me a grammar on the a grabber on the Amazon. $13, shipped same day. We live in an amazing time. Anyway, I had to share that with everybody because <laughs> I seriously, uh, and all joking aside, it's going to help me a lot with everyday tasks in the house, especially. It's not going to lift a guitar or an amplifier, but for every day, a sock on the floor, oops, I dropped, you know, my, my medicine bottle, whatever, it'll, it'll definitely do that. So that's a lifesaver for me. All right, back to the festivities. Okay, okay, okay. What's up, Mark? How you doing? Uh, oh, I'm so sorry, Jeff. You're not feeling well? Weak. Oh, my goodness. I hope you feel better, Jeff. Thanks for stopping in, though, despite not feeling well. I'm sorry to hear, but I really appreciate you spending the time and coming in. Thanks, man. Get better soon. Mark says insurance finally approved an MRI, and that's when it was found. Yeah. Man, I had three or four MRIs just for this back thing, like in a, within a two-week span. And then x-rays constantly. Treat yourself well. Yes. Good, good advice there from CJ. I've just received a private message from somebody who just joined the chat. Let's see what he's, what is he on about? Oh, <laughs> that's hysterical. Good stuff, Mark. Good stuff. I thought it was something we were going to talk about on the show. <laughs> Very cool. Yep, I just got it, Mark. I just got it. That's really cool, man. With the little figurine in the, in the thing. Very cool. Uh, Mark. Mr. Laura, you had to deal with that pain for a long time. Yeah, I'm really sorry. What, it, did it really take... It took a long time for them to approve it? That's, that's lousy. It really is. They make people suffer. I've been really lucky with the... My, I guess my insurance is good because I don't have any pushback whatsoever as far as all these tests and stuff. It's so funny. I got my hospital bill yesterday. It was over $120,000 for the surgery. For I was in the hospital from the 16th to the 20th. So what is that? 16, 17, five days, four nights, five days. All the medicine that they give you. Uh, I had like a 30-minute, what was billed as a rehab thing, which was absolutely a joke. It was just basically making sure you could stand, making sure you could walk. That that was billed for like 800 bucks for 30 minutes with a physical therapist. Uh, it's unbelievable. It's an itemized bill. You could look at everything. It's just hysterical how much they charge. Anesthesia was $8,000. Surgical. The room itself was $18,000. The It's unbelievable. So in this instance, I'm very, very grateful to have insurance because they paid 120 something thousand dollars. I had a $400 copay when we got in the, when we first went in on the 16th. He spent over two days building a new PC. Absolute overkill. Well, that's tremendous, man. Good. Have a lot of fun with it. I love, I built my last machine in 2020. Best way to do it. Absolutely, man. Go for the jugular. Get everything you want. How much RAM you got in there? I'm at 64, which now seems peasly. A lot of people have over 100. But then there's a lot of people that still have eight, so. They're doing these shows and stuff with OBS. It's good to have a decent graphics card and a lot of memory. You get what you want, exactly. All right. I'm going to put an ad up here. Another clothing ad. Wear pledge. Ensure to close for boys. Wear pledge. Boys clothing. If anybody has any questions about what I'm doing, again, please stop me. I'm I'm so used to doing this, and I don't want to. If somebody's new to this or wants to learn about print ads, don't let me rush through and 
basically what I'm doing here is selecting a category to put the ad in. So I know out of doing a million of them, you don't really have to do all this. You can go to right to advertising and then pick a category that you think is appropriate. In this case, it's clothing, obviously. Clothing. And it just goes by, it's a 20 year span there. So we're right in 1920. Where pledge would be our brand. Let's get out of radios. We are in clothing in my store category as well. Always want things to be lined up accurately. Where pledge. Looks like that's it. Everything else stays the same. But this will go back down to our regular price. What look at Dawn with a t-shirt comment. Today's overkill is tomorrow's adequate. Well, well said. And incredibly accurate. <laughs> All right. We have this cool schoolboy clothing maker known as Wear Pledge. You can see that, you know, when Junior wants to fish in the fishing bowl, which is kind of funny, or kick a football or rugby ball, whatever that is. Of course, he's or read his Tudor Jones book. Of course, it's going to be. Wear pledge. Uh, well, you built one years ago. You underpriced the wife. Which question? You better stuff in it. Yeah. The, the thing I love is I could always just upgrade my stuff too. Because I'm at 64 gigs. And like everything's working and purring like a kitten. So it's hard to believe. In June, it'll be four years already. But things, you know, you treat it well. It treats you well. Why is that child terrifying? He's enamored by his book. Insured clothes. I wonder what that means, that term means. Style is the very essence of these boys' suits. Also, the suits and overcoats presented in a parade of models. Exceptional quality. Every youngster in the American Legion of tomorrow. Maybe that's the keyword, American Legion. I used to play American Legion baseball. It was like a uh, semi-pro men's league. He looks like a doll. <laughs> All right, so... What are we dealing with? We got insured clothes for boys. I'm not going to put insured. He's reading Tudor Jones, published by the makers of Wear Pledge. So I guess we'll put that in. Um, boy reading fishbowl football. What else? Book. How about boy reading book? Telling Lori. Uh, that's hysterical. Boy reading book. Rootness, tootness, fighter in the West. Bam, that's that one. Start listing like reality. It's usually like a 10 second process for me. But I have fun going into details and stuff with everyone. I think it makes for a better experience watching YouTube. I wouldn't want to see somebody just race through listings. I could do that myself. We'll do one or two more. Uh, a little over an hour now, and um, I have a, a pleasant surprise upstairs that I have to deal with in, in the plumbing space. And I'm sure my wife's losing her mind that I haven't been up there yet. But, again, I have obligations. So uh, what should we do for the last one? Let's do this one. It's another attractive looking little ad here. Lovely ad. This one I will say is slightly smaller. It is 15 by 10. Why is it 15 by 10? You might ask Jimmy Flip it. Why is it 15 by 10 when everyone 16 by 11? Well, you see, see how trimmed it is? And it's not, this black border exists on the right side too, just to come out and scan. This is one of those examples of an ad where the outer half inch or so around, maybe a little less, maybe a quarter inch around was really frayed and nasty. So I trimmed it off preserving the actual content of the advertisement completely. Again, this is a poor scan. I don't know why this is cut off, but this black border exists around all four sides, and there's maybe like an eighth of an inch border. So with that said, it's a little bit small. And, you know, being truth in advertising, always being one of my uh, my goals, this one is a 15 by 10 inch ad, when all the other ones are 16 by 11. So we lost an inch. And this is Nashua Woolnap Blankets. Nashua. Woolnap 
blankets. This screams of a oh, wool, not wool. Weird combination of words I'm not familiar with, but <laughs> let's just go with it. Uh, we'll put this in housewares, most likely. Household. Home decor. There we go. I think sheets kind of match that, don't they? And then for this, I'll do my... This is houseware, I think it's called. Household items. Sure. Wear pledge. This is Nashua. I don't know why I'm saying it that way. I just think it sounds funny. Nashua. It's a printed Okay. And it's 15 by 10, a little bit small. We'll do the same pricing. So let's take a look at this final ad of the evening. We'll do some more. I have, this is, um. how many do I have left? I have 10 left, right? So we'll have nine left after the show. I only went through maybe 30 pages in this magazine. So there's plenty more ads we'll go through for the next listing show. We'll continue with this magazine. I'll save some of these scans the next show but anyway let's pull up the uh blanket ad here kind of uh you know you got mother once again household doing the laundry as mother does light as a feather warm as feathers you see down here is the actual company uh amory brown and co out of boston lancaster calborn ginghams indian head cloth 16 by 20 inches Oh, you get a doll blanket. There you go. Send 25 cents in coin for doll blankets. Size 16 by 20 in pink or blue border or plaid. And they give you size dimensions for the different types of blankets. But it's basically just a nice uh, blanket for your household. Gingham is a keyword. Ding, 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 ding. Don't write says gingham. Artisan. Good question. We always look for that, Biff. Something Is that, I don't know if that's a signature or just supposed to be part of the design of the bed. I think it's the latter. I don't think that's a signature unless it says like FS. If anyone wants to take a look at that. Oh, you can't see it because of my stupid picture. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see it now. See this? It either says FS or it's just some kind of um, like part of the, the, the artist rendering of this bed. I'm not sure. Biff, Biff is airing on the side of signature. So anybody want to look that up? FS, 1920. And we will put Gingham in by popular demand. I have no problem with that. Gingham. Thank you for that. Looks to be a signature to you. Yeah, it could be. Could be. My brand says Hashua. Is that right? Uh, the way I typed it. I'm sorry. You're right. Nashua. Thank you very much for that. Thank you for that. Frank. Nashua. See? Typos will get you. No, nobody's search, searching for a Hashua. <laughs> Looks like a center. Okay. If you guys want to have at it, look for somebody that's, I think it's FS. We'll, we'll go back to it. Let me just finish the listing portion. Um, bedroom, housewife, bed post in the background. I think that's enough. After all, it's just an ad for a blanket. Let's list that, and then we'll take a look at the picture again for the signature. If it's Johann Sebastian uh, for JS, no, I can't. That right, creates similar. I think I said it was FS, it looks like. Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra, little known fact in 1920, at the age of five, Frank started off doing um, artwork for magazines. Boom. Drafts are done. Come back in. Uh, get rid of... There we go. Thanks, everybody. I am back. Now I could go back to the main screen and look at the comments. Looks like a signature. Keith says maybe you can attempt to fix the toilet with your grab. But that is disgusting. I would imagine so because wool's in there. That's a good point. We could put wool as, in a, as a uh, sp uh, keyword specific, as a personal specific, what do they call it? The word I just used earlier. But good question. 
So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I know it was relatively quick, but we still got an hour and 15 minutes in the book. But uh, this this issue with my dad's uh, toilet is going to be made worse with every passing moment. So I think I need to go up and address that. Um, what's today? Tuesday. I am free on Friday. We don't have a show until middle of April. So we have a nice little break here. It's kind of, I kind of need it physically. So uh, I'll appreciate the, the break from the road and hang out and get a bunch of listings up on eBay and hopefully sell more product. Dawn with 11,000 listings. That's amazing. Congratulations for that, Dawn, again. Can't find anything for that auto suit anymore. Time that's okay. You have all the time in the world, and if you you could always send me a little uh, little message if you think that this is uh, an artist of some renown that we need to indicate in the ad, I'd be happy to do that. I appreciate it. So anyway, again, thanks everybody. If you haven't had a chance, please do leave a thumbs up. And seriously, if you know anybody in your sphere of influence, you know people, your friends, family, whoever, uh, fellow YouTubers, people that you hang out with in communities or whatever that are into this kind of uh, content, please let them know about me. Um, Ask them to subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. So I'll see you guys on Friday. We'll do another show. Maybe we'll list again. We'll finish up some of this magazine. I'll scan some more of them because it's. I love the old magazines. They always have some really interesting stuff as we kind of saw tonight. So again, have a great week, everybody. And I'll see you on Friday. Peace and love. Good night.